Here we go. All right, hey folks, welcome to Real Liberty Media and put it dot com, and you can find it on the internet, RLMRadio.xyz, and a whole lot of other places it goes downstream to. Well, I'm your host, I'm Vincent Easley, and I'm here with you today, and all the other fun folks out there listening later, maybe downstream. This is a Ponder Ganders. What matters worldwide? And it's con- <laughs> continuation of my theme that I started back in 2013 at UCY.tv. Uh, I had I'd started this, and I ended up going in another direction as far as what I called it and what the actual artunication that it be is. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you about a little of them changes and how that evolved along the way. So today, it is uh, it's called... I had called it the embrace of the state, and I had to put a being in front of that in parentheses. Being the embrace of the embrace of the state. It won't be in the title, but it'll be here in the radio log. And you should really be over here if you want to follow along, because this is uh, this is kind of a lot of fun here that I had with it. Uh, I call it a paraphrased plagiarism in a way, and uh, extracting what I call that artunication, extracting the art out of uh, what's around us. You know, people want to claim copyright and stuff on words and, and sounds, but uh, <clears throat> there's nothing new under the sun. So uh, I just feel like, hey, put it all together. And, and I've given you all credit and blinks and all that stuff. So this is it. Uh, let me start at the top. Away with words. Extruded in black and white. Remember that you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Become the media. Take back your future. Journalism, truth needs defense. Be the media. That's right. Find me here, Vinny, online. And uh, there's a Real Liberty Media support link right there for some of our faithful followers and listeners that uh, would like to throw a coin, Bitcoin, or a Dogecoin, or even a dollar bill. Uh, I think somebody will be stripping later tonight. Y'all want to show up with a handful of dollars. Yeah, you know, stripping paint off <laughs> off the, the walls. <laughs> Being the embrace of the state. So this is uh, September the 6th of 2019, listening live right here at Friday noon central. Join the chat. Come on in and say howdy. It's uh, 5 p.m. Greenwich Minute time. <laughs> Grimner. Uh, yes, and 1 p.m. Two minutes after now, Eastern time. At uh, Real Liberty Media, what matters? Uh, Ponder Ganner. So this is War of... Sense making. I had started out calling it the war on sense making, and I added in behind it in clickable color. Now I've been running with this in black and white business here, but I think about three now has been uh, uh, <coughs> kind of a running theme here. It, it just kind of fell in, and it seems to keep working for me, anyways. Somebody said hello. Uh, Flashes, we're going to need barbecue. Okay, we can do that. September September the 12th, 29th. Where are we going? Where, where are we going to set this up? Hey, Chesgoda. We're going to do a radio show, I think, next Friday. And I'm calling it the abortion debate. And there will probably be some God words and stuff like that thrown around. Uh, I'm working on titling that up just right. It, it's going to be in black and white, but bloody too. I think... That's probably the tricks, you know, go to. I'm laughing, but it's not really a laughable matter. It's yours. Circle, I see you. The Shia is one of my muses. She has given me a lot of influence in the, the way I think, uh, the way, uh, well, and, and giving me encouragement and lessons and helping me to learn and uh, see other than or differently. And that's what I set out a long time to do. Go experience the view, the perspective of other people. And I think uh, I think I have a pretty good understanding of way things work in this world. <clears throat> but here, here we we'll get off the world and let's get in a boat and go for a float. This is a, a photo, a, a painting from a, a friend down in uh, South America, and it's amazing how much of uh, our tunication that I get from her too. It's uh, it's collided time and time again. Now. The, the next poem, after this one, well, I'll tell you about that when I get there. Let me tell you about this one right here. As a paper boat, <coughs> wait, Miss Smith, maybe I'll take a little swallow for it. Water for a start. 
<laughs> yes, that worked. As a paper boat, life fluctuates. Wait a minute. I'm gonna let me stop myself. I'm gonna make this bigger because it's so small, <laughs> and I wanted to squeeze it all in there. Now let's try it again. As a paper boat, life fluctuates like salt water in the wound. Life burns, sometimes hurting. As a breeze that never, that, as a breeze that moves my soul, my boat moves forward. The living become on an overdue trip. Like the waves that move us, situations make way. As a trip without a compass, my destiny, my destiny slow, sails slowly. <coughs> Sorry, I was distracted. My destiny sails slowly. As a night that hides in the black, the misfortune of lost navigators and sea, lifetime, and madness. This is, uh, I found this fella here by my friend Dorsey and Artist, and uh, he had posted that poem to one of her pictures, and you'll see it here in the radio log. Pretty fantastic. I, I like it. And that poem is by Alejandro Or uh, Ortuvia, and the painting is by his friend and mine, Artist, Dorsey and Artist. Uh, you'll find her real name right here where you can find her on Facebook. I've got links included. Come back in here. There's also an extra uh, poem that you can click on that goes to YouTube from Alejandro, and that is from uh, I'm small again. I can see it. It's a poem by Pablo uh, Neruda. Neruda, yes. This is uh, he's a pretty famous uh, uh, Latino, I guess. Uh, I don't I don't know where the guy's from. I should have looked a little closer to the man right there, but. Alejandro reads his poem there, and you can find it again here in the uh, log. Now, here's the big thing right here. I was just like, wow, this is perfect. <clears throat> so I had been over on Facebook, and I was looking at uh, uh, memories. And I had forgot all about this poem. This comes back from 20 and 12. I wrote it then. It's called We the Sea. And all this ties, ties together. I actually, let me, I'm going to have to bring this picture so you can see, especially Circle. She is really going to appreciate this. Let's see, copy image right now. Uh, and I think I've got this where you can open it. Uh, if you're not on Facebook, there's some some back doors in there for you guys to be able to get in to see that. I better dab Lee on it, so you don't even have to have Facebook to to have it to get in there. All right, wait a minute. Let's see here. <clears throat> so if y'all see that picture, it's awesome. These people, like a big wheel above the the ocean, and I think I got to stop this flashing light here. Uh, what did it say anyway? Something about me as a uh, ponder gander. I missed it. It was a notification in one of the other network check there. The, well, this one right here, but a different, uh, I don't know what you call them, server. There's IRC and all this other stuff, uh, different ways of getting into the chat. You can come to reallibertymedia.com right there at the home page. Look around, you'll find a pop up chat and radio and different things there. Just come along and Take a looky see. <clears throat> so I'm going to open this. It says see more. That's what I, I embedded this with a uh, dab Lee, I think, is how I put this in here. But anyways, it is clickable that you can see it for yourself. Oh, yeah, I put it over on Twitter with the dab Lee. That's right. <clears throat> and used it there. Here we go. This is it. For me, from uh, 2012. I think that was when the world was uh, supposed to end, right? In December. I think I wrote this before then. Well, it couldn't have been after. We wouldn't be here. No, it didn't end. But uh, we'll be talking about the world's end, and the end of the world for some along the way here today as we get towards the end. Because where we started at was the end. That, uh, that warmed up uh, coming in. Well, there's one song after that. But the end is the uh, the beginning and the end, and it all rolls around in a circle like you see in this painting from Dorsian. But it is. We the sea sauntering, swaying, splashing, spraying by the shore strain, playing, laying, staying, narrow bay, sweeping along the ebb and flow, in touch with all the world you know. Stay with me. Play with me. Feel the wind blow. Pray with me, pray with me, tell the world so. Piece by piece, grains by the gram, 
Oh, yeah, we know. We understand. Dropping the seats is more than me. Near the land as the sun shines, we be hanging. Politely disobeying. The world not betraying. We're the sea, you and me. Our teeth as a reef, reefs. Staring, bearing, boldly declaring. Dashing, daring. Narrow more and snaring. We're the salt. We will not halt. Drip, drop. Our dreams always sought. None more, it seems, to tell us not. Sway with me. Play with me. We make the ebb flow. Staying. Saying. We know. I like it. I was, I was very happy to find that. Now, let me tell you what happened. I just found that, and I copied it, and then I come back over and was going to actually go look again for some more uh, Muse from Dorsey and for and she posted it. Boom, there it was. It's just like perfect. That fits this this poem fits that picture. So I, I hope you all are seeing it and if you're listening somewhere else you're gonna have to come back uh over to Real Liberty Media to my page. Just uh reallibertymedia dot com forward slash author forward slash vine. Uh that's how I spell Vinny <laughs> with a capital V and a capital E on the end in the beginning. Yeah. Can't switch them up. <laughs> So no Facebook, sway with me and read the rest of We the Sea. There's a link right in there. There is, there is. So what is Sondering? <clears throat> We're going to open this up too before we go much further. Because I really like this, uh, this word. It was not a word, but it turns out that it is actually a word. And other people have picked it up. Sondering. So I came up with that word in 2012 and here I find it. <clears throat> again here just uh, yesterday to bring it back together the realization that each random uh, excuse me the realization that each random passerby is a living life is vivid and complex as your own populated with their own ambitions friends routines worries and inherited craziness let's look at this fella that has some more to say. This must be the place. That's what it says right there. This must be the place blog. 2016, 126, Sondering. Let me come see who say what. And hello. Hello, Chaskura. <laughs> I have a future as a Canadian rapper, he says. <laughs> yeah, if you guys need to uh, give me a... To get my attention, you're going to have to just type Vine into the uh, Real Liberty Media chat right there. You'll distract me, or I mean, attract me and bring me right back over to see what it is you have to say. <laughs> Let's go back here to this must be the place, because that's where I'm at. You're here too, whether you realize it or not. This is from January the 28th of 2016. <clears throat> so he discovered sondering, obviously, long after me, or perhaps not. Maybe he didn't even talk about it to him. Maybe he had that word in his head all along. He says, I absolutely love people watching. I do too. I really do. Especially at uh, a festival. I think it's pretty safe to say that if you want to idly spend your time observing the diversity that occurs within humanity, a festival is the perfect place to do so. He goes on to say, I recently got back from my uh, Rainbow Serpent Festival. Yes, another festival. And I spent quite a large portion of my time doing exactly that. <coughs> that sounds like my kind of guy right here. Uh, I'm hardly the most fashion-conscious being in the world. I'm, in fact, probably <laughs> in the running for the least clued up, I, again, like me. But I'm absolutely uh, fascinated by festival attire. I honestly love seeing other people's uh, creative uh, creativity and ideas. It's amazing how much time people obviously spend on costumes, signs, and body art. In my opinion, the world is a much better place when there's glitter involved, too. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of glitter. <clears throat> okay, so we part ways there, but that's okay. I mean, it, it, glitter, if glitter don't kill you, I don't know what would. Wouldn't. I don't know. Glitter? It, it won't hurt you. It's okay. Glitter. As, uh, as well as all the colors, and I like that he spelled colors with uh, in the uh, European fashion. And I... I sh yeah... In clickable color, I almost considered making it European, and I think I might go back and actually change the spelling of color with the U, add the U. I like that for some reason. Maybe I'm just odd. Maybe I'm different, or maybe I'm like you. Well, anyways, 
all the colors and the face paint, headbands and sequins. There's actually something really special about watching people enjoy themselves. Especially when it involves music. This sounds like well, a moose girl type of good time. <clears throat> and I'd say, yeah, I agree. I thrive off of seeing people's faces light up when they hear the first note of their favorite tune kick in. Or two friends grin at each other before <laughs> embracing and pulling off some questionable dance moves. It's the best feeling when the DJ drops a tune that creates an energy in the crowd. And I can't help but look around and just take in everybody having a good time. I could have wrote this, I tell you, <laughs> if I was a writer. I am a writer. I will. For a couple of years now, one of my favorite words has been sondering. Ha! <laughs> turns out it was mine too, and I would forgotten. I've thought about it a lot this weekend. This is good. It means the realization that each random passerby is a living life as vivid and complex as your own, populated with their own ambitions, friends, routines, worries, and inherited craziness. I smiled at a lady with a shaved head. When she caught, uh, when she caught my eye from across the dance floor, she walked over and gave me a hug. <clears throat> gave me a hug before smiling back and walking off to disappear into the crowd. I couldn't stop help thinking about it after. Isn't it mad that for a split second you can share a small moment of intimacy with someone, brush your arm, or as you pass them in the street, or even just make eye contact for a quarter second, and that's it. There's a flicker in your life. They appear for such a small portion of it, and for the most part, they're completely irrelevant to you, and you won't even uh, give them a second thought, yet they have an entire life themselves. I'll probably never see that woman again in my lifetime, or the man who turned to me at the brink of a particular big drop in a song and grinned and pro proclaimed, it's time to celebrate. Yeah, put your hands in there when you do that too, huh? I guess when you're traveling, I'm a traveler, you get to cross paths with a more diverse selection of the people than you would uh, normally. I paused and reading that because it's hitting in my mind. Wow, this, this is what I do. I suppose I'm going to spend a lot more time than usual sundering. Did I read that right? Yes, I suppose I'm going to spend a lot more time than usual sundering. You know what? When I get out of much, uh, a bunch of folks again, <clears throat> I'm going to do the very same thing. Uh, even more so, and I'll be thinking of this right here, and let me tell you who he is. <clears throat> it is, this must be the place, it's the blog, look it up, Sondering, January 28th, let me see uh, this man's name, is it, uh, I thought I'd bet the top, let me go to the bottom, uh, da -da -da. here it is, can I read it, oh, it's a girl, Emma Lee Worthy, I click like on it, I like it, I like it. So, I'm going to bring it over to clap, uh, the chat for you. Copy. And it's in the uh, our tunicated radio log. Hey, Cakes. What's up, buddy? This guy's cool. That's a great guy. Hey, he, he, was, he would be the very same person described by Emma. Let me go copy her name. Because so, it's small, I'll be able to see it better if I copy and paste it, I think. Oh, there it might. I highlight it. Yeah. Emma Leeworthy. I think that might be a pen name. It sounds like it, but it may not be. But anyways, whether it be or not, uh, I myself am uh, non-anonymous so that you don't have to. I should have said it like Joe Dirt. You don't have to. <laughs> That's her name, Emma Leeworthy. I feel worthy. Do you feel worthy? Absolutely. <clears throat> Let's go back to the ponder gander, to the page, to the place where all this artunication lay. It, it is uh, in black and white. But, 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 let me just go back up so I can read it just right. Right, right, right there at the top it says it. Being the embrace of the state. So I was going, originally I started out going of the state embracing you, but now it's more of a state of being, right? I really, really like the way this went. It's the war of sense-making 
in clickable color. And I'll go back and I'll change that spelling. And the clickable, it is in the uh, brackets. And I will take, I'm going to go through all the links because you can hover. You know, if you're here, you can hover and you'll know it's a link. But I'll go ahead and take the time to put them, every one of them, into brackets. So there's going to be a lot of brackets to include. <clears throat> Let me come over here and see what's being said to me in chat. Hey, cakes is cakes. Hey, buddy. And Donna, true that. True, true. Show. Yaman. Back to the bug. I don't like calling it R log. It's just a word that's hard to say. R L O G. So I guess I should say R L O G or R log because it's a radio log. Thank you, Circle. She uh, amused that one too, and we brought it to bear. Hal Anthony and I both use that, and some of our other broadcasters ain't coming on. All right, Charles Cura says. Uh, well, this is going to be, I guess we're going to cover this more on uh, the, I think, are we doing this next week, next Friday now on the 10th or not? Um, is that right? No, it'd be after the 10th. I'll look at the date. A week from today, just go to, we're going to do a abortion debate. So, like I, I said this earlier, and uh, there will be blood. You know, you know where I'm going to that one. There will be blood. All right, but no regrets. Non, je regrette raison. I don't speak French, but et pour un ami is for a friend. Nas, hello. This is to you. Le voulez-vous en français? Meet me somewhere beyond the sea. Hey, I played that. That's uh, Bobby Williams. That was live in tw 2001. I uh, played that in the pre tune occasion. You can find it right here. You, just, you can't help but if you just roll your little thing around over, and you'll see links. If you guys are uh, listening now, come over to Real Liberty Media forward slash 2019 forward slash 09 forward slash A dash ponder dash gander dash podcast dash blog 2019 dash 09 dash 06. It's asking for a password right now because I still got to add the uh, audio on this and that, but. Uh, passwords Vinny Vine V capital V I N capital E follow this along you'll have fun I promise and if you're uh, catching this downstream and that's kind of uh, water is kind of the theme to here part of it there's some tie-ins here we upon the sea we the sea okay here we are back and this uh, this is my friend listening with her dad and her uh, uh, cousin uh, Supremo Y tu papá, Julieta, gracias. Una amiga, como uh, hermanita. This is like a, since we uh, we have a, a close relationship in the internet, where we uh, ex exchange the uh, ideas of uh, how the world works and what it is that uh, comes upon us against our peace. Uh, and that poem that I wrote and read, Peace by Peace, it's P E A C. By peace, P I E C E. Peace by pieces, right? One grain, one, uh, one grain at a time. A drop in the ocean. How many, how many drops? Well, how long would it take if a butterfly had to take a drink of water and hold it and uh, move it to another world? Forever and ever. That's a long time. How long does uh, friendships last? The real ones are forever. Flash. He's my friend. I love that guy. We had one little spiff, and I was like, oh, no. I think Flash broke up with me. Like, you can't do that. You're my friend, man. No, uh No. And we we come back and figured it out. We worked it out. And that's what friends do. Friends fight sometimes, right? That's cool. But uh depends on the fight. Some fight are fair. Some not so much. And that's where we want to try. Well, me, the ponder gander that I take looking at how all the perspectives and, and so I think I got a pretty good eye I, I've been a peacemaker my whole life it's, I guess it's the in me some people say Libras are that way I don't know what it all makes up to be but uh, I call myself a witness and a judge and an advocate some people say judge not at least you be judged what well, a good friend's going to tell you if you're doing something wrong 
Hey, they might not like the way you sing, but <clears throat> they'll grin and bear it. <coughs> I maybe tell you later, if you're really, really making a fool of yourself, they might tap you on the shoulder. <laughs> what does Julia got done? She says back in 2013, she said, Friendship can tear down all the walls that, it, that attempt to intimidate its might. Unity befri- between friends can achieve what seems impossible. Friends are a great example of the way to obtain world peace. Sure is. You're a good friend, Julieta. You're very strong in advocating for the rights of people. That's what it's supposed to be about. I think it's going to come out more too here. I'm reading along here in the Ponder Gander than it be. And I'm looking, I say, is that reflection you, you see really you? <clears throat> uh, y'all listening pre uh in the music you heard Wayfaring Stranger and who sang that and uh, the links here is a beautiful song I hold my tongue <laughs> I don't do much talking sad eyes never lie don't you know that I've been there sad eyes from the boss that was a good song we heard that one too yeah, but you know me I don't really hold my tongue do you no <laughs> no Oh, uh, when I come to that place, that part of me, where I find my rest, because Jubilee, in rendezvous, meet me. I wrote that too. I, I don't know where it, it's just somewhere. The art, the artist. There's so many different forms of art, and I, I just connect with artists. A circle, with uh, so many other folks that are artists. That we share that bond that in the soul somehow are you you or someone else's idea of what you should be I write my own script in life but it's the purpose in my soul that guides me y'all know Becky Becky I am she said that love you Becky that's another good friend who never met face to face but we've been years here talking writing back and forth on the internet on doing some radio together talking speaking voice to voice we see the in color whether it be through the ether sometimes you don't never get to meet somebody face to face in this world do you know we're all going while going along here, <clears throat> what it is we want to do. Social norms determine much of what of uh, much of how we behave. Everywhere we go, we're under pressure from society to act and behave a certain way, and punished for not conforming to these norms. We can define conformity as altering our behaviors, beliefs, and attitudes in order to match those of the people around you. It follows that social nonconformity is the refusal refusal to comply with society's standard for normal attitudes, <coughs> behaviors, and beliefs. I wrote that, but then I edited it uh, yesterday as I was working on it, and I included my original down here. Going through pro writing aid, um, passive voice and stuff, so. Uh, I like to use that to to check it, but a lot of times too, I will leave the original because uh, to me, uh, there's content loss. And there's okay to to speak in the passive voice as well, but I have this real small. Cause I don't know if I can read it. Uh, much I'm going to try it. Much of the way in which we behave is determined by social norms. Everywhere we go, we are under pressure from society to act and behave a certain way, and are punished for not conforming to conforming to these norms. Conformity is defined as altering our behavior, beliefs, and attitudes in order to match those of the people around you. It follows that the social nonconformity is the refusal to comply with society's standards for normal attitudes, behaviors, and beliefs. That's how I originally wrote it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon just a sec. Here we go, back to it. We travel. I travel. We travel because we need to. 
because distance and differences are the secret tonic to creativity. When we get home, home is still the same, but something in our minds has changed. Has changed, and that changes everything. Thought, ideas, and notions take us to many places to be free. Free your mind from the chains of conformity. From Michael Cross, there is, uh, and I went to go looking for Michael. You know, he was at UCY, and uh, UCY closed the doors up mostly, and uh, a little bit still going on there, especially with Hal Anthony and a few other shows. UCY TV. Michael Cross unlocked the door, but you can find uh, Michael Cross on uh, the YouTube. Look for him there. So I've seen, uh, I think about two weeks ago, he's put up a video. But I could not find uh, his websites for some reason. He's an author. He's written several books. A fascinating man to listen to. Very intelligent. And I've said, uh, I say uh, tongue-in-cheek that I'm the smartest person I know because I know so many people smarter than I. And I believe that to be true. To be able to defer to uh, certain judgment of certain people that you know that you've tested and tried. That they're a, a beacon. Hal Anthony, right here at Real Liberty Media on Sundays, is a great beacon. And, and it's too too bad. Most people run around this world with their blinders on. Thinking that they can use their words to rule. <clears throat> we'll come to that. How often have I have said that when you eliminate the impossibility, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Elementary, dear Watson. Down, of course, is uh, Sherlock. Well, the stage is set. The urge to save humanity is almost always only a false front for the urge to rule it. You'll have to come over here and see who the authors are on these if I don't read them to you, because everything's cited. It's a, a paraphrased plagiarism that it be, but I don't think it is. If you just bringing all these words together, right, and these ideas, and this is how it all fell in for me, fell into place, and it really changed the direction I was going. And back to that that wind that uh, on your sail, excellent. I just I really can't say that. This is this I think I like this better than any one I've done. I've always had this trouble with the transition and, and uh this came together so well. Like uh, learning to operate a bulldozer. It's not hand and eye, you gotta feel it in the seat of your pants. And it, it was a while before I really would say I I was like moving the levers and it's like Rrr! you know, as I run all this other equipment. The bulldozer a lot different. You gotta feel it and that's that's where it is. And where do we come to? On the opposite side of the, of the embrace of the state. And here's from a song. He wore his gun outside his pants for all the honest world to feel. To rule humanity. I pause and come over. Somebody say something. No. Shit. <laughs> Sherlock says grim now. <laughs> Thank you. Dirt. <clears throat> yes. The honest world to feel to to rule humanity. Nothing is so dangerous to the progress of the human mind than to assume you know what they say assume is that our views of science are ultimate and that there are no mysteries in nature, that our triumphs are complete, and that there are no new worlds to conquer. Humphrey Davy. I've tied a lot of other people's words in between with mine. I, I, I like I like my uh, transitions. I've never been able to bring it together. I don't know if you like it or not. I'm loving this. Let's keep going. Nothing is so dangerous. We said that. The remnants of a brave new world. An unsettling, loveless, loveless, and even sinister place. Where we all, where we just all want to live. So go about your earthly mission. Don't trust no politicians. You look yours. You look to yours, and I'll look to mine. And up against the wall there with Colton. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day of evil thereof. Matthew said that and is written. There is a time. Thank you, Steve. This is for, we we listen to this in the pre-tunication. There is a time. There's a time for us to wonder. When time is young, and so are we, 
The woods are greener over yonder, the path is new, and the world is free. That's a Dillard song. You might have heard it on the Andy Griffith show, the Dillards. The hillbillies that come down and sing sometimes. That old blonde-headed gal, uh, sweet on Andy. They've been around a long time. There's a lot of covers to this, There Is a Time. And I started a uh, a playlist over on my YouTube channel, my alternate one where I, I, I use that specifically for uh, music and, and that sort of thing. Vincent, uh, what is the name of that one? My regular is Vincent Easley, and that one uh, is Vincent Easley. No, Vincent Ray's. I forget. I don't know. Anyways, I got a few of them for different purposes. Here we go. Back to it. Back. Where was I at? Distracted? No. I was there. This is the time. There's always a time, no matter where you're at. This man is haunted by the vastness of eternity. We ask ourselves, will our actions echo, 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 echo across the centuries? Will strangers hear our names long after we're gone? Wonder who we were? How bravely we fought? And how fiercely we loved? Oh, is it, are we more like a, like driftwood on the river? That was from Dara Long. Listen to that one. I tried to sing along a little bit. Somebody said that they wanted to drive nails in their head. I'm glad to help. But I, uh, you know, I must wander on to keep my rendezvous. So there's another tie-in, rendezvous. If you if you go through there, I hope y'all see the all these intricacies. I just love it. I just can't say it enough. I'll say it again. I love this one. Dude. Well, drifting along. Till this weary river meets the deep blue sea. That was a cover of Ernest Tubb by Dara Long. Him and uh, Steve Tolbert are friends. Now we get into some calamity when we start thinking about maybe drifting along down to the sea. You listen to the rest of that song and it's kind of uh, woeful. Calamity. We get to some famous almost last words. Leave me alone and let me go to hell by my own route. That's what Calamity Jane said. Well, I'm your huckleberry. Y'all know who said that. Well, making the scene trouble in any language. Curious to know the Latin? I'm your huckleberry, Doc. Now I've got links here. One, two, three, four. Under the mustache of I'm your huckleberry. That's about the movie uh, uh, <laughs> Tombstone. Derp a derp. Uh, because there was two, Tombstone and Wide Earth. But uh, this is one with Val Kilmer. It's an excellent movie. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I think a lot of people will. <clears throat> so there's some explanations of what the uh, the translation of uh, the Latin to English. And there's also uh, some in here where this guy shows, uh, <laughs> translates it into modern English. Does a fine job. Yep. And then... Uh, talking about what is the huckleberry is it a huckleberry or huckleberry well there's a lot more said on that you you can listen to that there by coming over here and picking up the link but uh a huckleberry that was like a a pallbearer and uh the huckleberry these are all both words contemporary to the time of doc holiday grim or calamity jane and vinnie who Boy, she was a rough old cuss, I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> oh, boy. Yeah, she's the one said, uh, she says, leave me alone and let me go to hell by my own route. Well, I mean, that's what we got to do, one one for another. Right? I mean, can you force somebody the right way? That awful sound. Bang, bang. I heard that song. Now you're dead. Bang, bang. Yep, now he's dead. He didn't even say goodbye. Nobody heard his dying words. Oh, that's the way it goes. The end. What do you want on your tombstone? Well, I think the end. We started at the end, and we're in the middle, and we're still not to the beginning and back to the end. Do the end. Well, we're going to keep going. Decision. Decision is, a, is a, a sharp knife. It cuts clean and straight. Indecision. A dull one that hacks and tears. And leaves ragged edges behind it. Gordon Graham said that. Now I've got a picture here. Control and escape. And one's got a badge on his hat. And the other's running flat out. Words are powerful. Both spoken and written. 
If guarded, we can use them to our favor. Words profess or confess intent that can and will be used against you in a legal jurisdiction and in, uh, I, I'm going to change in that to all as well. Okay, right, sorry. And in our social constructs. I say also, I, should, I want to change it to as well. Because it sounds like an asshole, because sometimes you think that's where people are. Uh, other people might call them anal retentive, uh, retentive or um, the head, uh, heads up. <laughs> Control or escape. That's the buttons on the the keypad there. And control. Uh, he has the uh, the hat on with the badge and the escape. Anarchy. Well, I'm an anarchist from Arkansas. <laughs> sure enough. Control or escape. To serve or to be served. Now let's be frank and earnest. <laughs> There's Ernest T. Bass. You click that on listening. Him say it. <laughs> but. Really, but because not is because is not an excuse, but it's the start of an answer. To be or not to be, that's the option. Uh, <laughs> tongue tied. <clears throat> to be or not to be, that is the obfuscation. What can Obfuscation. I I kept having a hard word with this. You know, I get tongue tied and just can't hardly say a word. O b f u s c a t i o n. Obfuscation. A few sk- <laughs> Stop. All right. Let me go see what somebody said. I, I'm blinking in, uh, in the ponder gander. And <laughs> the phone is ringing. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I can be undistracted. Probably. I'm not going to answer it. I can't. I'll be way too distracted. Let me come back over to the real number man. See. From Pancakes. I'm reading out loud. In a tongue tied. Yeah. Call back. I can't get to the phone right now. I'm in chat. Okay, I can't keep up with you guys. <clears throat> Would they stop bringing? They did. Obfuscation. 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 Say that three times fast. Well, I don't chew my cabbage twice, but I tried to say that several times. Well, let's just go with a control alt delete then. That's a three fingered salute. Y'all get now, you hear? What'd you say you say? <laughs> Just because you have the right to say something doesn't mean you should. Sometimes it is good to know when not to, or at least how to say it properly. Good, man, good men can say the wrong thing, and that doesn't make them bad. Just as a bad person can say great things that won't make them good. So I wrote that too. Yeah, I, I'm reading... A lot of what I wrote and a lot of what other people wrote and tied it all together there, Cakes. So, I spent a lot of time putting this one together and I had a great time doing it. It just all felt so perfect to me. Now, I got a picture right here. It says press corresponded on it. It says uh, it identifies the document uh, the, uh, as the person who has identified. So, we got some problems in some words here, but we didn't fix them up. It's good enough. It worked. The person who is identified by this document is a member of Real Liberty Media News Team. The freelance bearer of this card is authorized to investigate and report on newsworthy events, incidents, and persons. This is for identification and notification of intent. Then it worked very well. It just exactly. I've got Real Liberty Media on there. My name, my phone number, which is my cell, but I don't answer it. Uh, you can call me at home. It's 501-745-7499. You can touch me any way you want to. Look at me, about.me, Vincent Easley, the second. That's with an I, I. And it is the First Amendment right, and it has served me well. All rights expressly reserved, and not, never, ever wait. So this piece of laminated paper, it's like magic. It's a magic. It really is. It worked. It served me well. Opening doors and protection for my right of the press. Me, Vince Easley, Real Liberty Media, reallibertymedia.com. <clears throat> let's see, let's see. 15 minutes. Uh, Circle says, uh, no, Pancake, no. Donna says, staying authentic. Thank you, Donna. And Pancakes is making coffee. I got coffee over here. I had much chance to 
for a couple, three swallows, I think. Well, what about this whole to be or not to be business, and where did it all come from? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing in them, to die, to sleep, no more in, and by uh, by sleep I, no more, and by a sleep to say we end, the heartache and the thousand natural shocks, that flesh is heir to. It's a consummation. Devout, devoutly to be wished, to die to sleep. To sleep perchance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For that sleep of death, what dreams may come. For we have shuffled off this mortal coil. Must give us pause. That's that's the respect. It makes calamity. There's the tie-in again. Calamity of so long a life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor wrong. The proud man costumely. The pains of despise. Love. The laws of the laws delay. The insolence insolence of office in the spurns. The patient Mary how thou unworthy takes when he himself might his quitus make. With a bear butkin who would Fidel's bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the wheel, and makes us rather bear those ills we have, and fly to the other, than fly to others that we know of not. Thus conscience does not coward us all, and thus the, na- the, t- the native hue of resolution <clears throat> is sickened I'll kind of run this one out is sickened or with the pale cost of thought in enterprises of great pitch and moment with this regard their currents turn away and those and lose the name of action I should have made that one bigger before I started reading it. Uh, there's a clicker liquor right here it's all clickable right Excerpts uh, from the 1948 screen adaption. You can hear a professional actor doing that. And then there's also uh, a link back to the poem. And uh, from Hamlet, spoken by Hamlet, to be or uh, not to be. Yeah, what well, Shakespearean actors, you know, I said it in, uh, Ar- Ar- what would you call that, Arcsperean? <laughs> yeah. Like a hillbilly. Duh, he says he's up to maybe, I think, 23% of understanding the words uh, coming out of my mouth. Now, you can also, uh, to see or not to see, there's a link or clicker right there, where you get over to uh, see this fella called a creepy purple. But to see or not to see, explained. A creepy purple interpretation of to be or not to be. you got to get over here to the R-Log to be able to find out. Now, I pulled a memory out here from Austin Thomas. And when was that? Uh, that was from a year ago, back in 2018. This is an archive to his uh, blog talk radio. I ought to go over and admonish these folks again for not coming over here and putting some radio together at Real Liberty Media. You know, there's a place for you right here. Guerrilla Radio. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Uh, join Anarchy Austin Thomas. On Gorilla Radio, with open lines, you can call in, participate. You know what he says here? talks about uh, the doctrine of statism and the doctrine of liberty. Now, let's go see who said what. Uh, up, up, the Freaker's Ball. Oh, Schedule Friday, yep. Barman over here, our bot. Hey, Moose Girl. It's a given, uh, given the what for over here right now. Their body is Barman <laughs> and Vanna White. They work together. we got some other... Uh, Weather dork, and we've got some private bots working the, the parking lot. Uh, but you can uh, you can entertain them, or they can entertain you. <clears throat> what about the uh, doctrine of statism? Well, it requires force. What about that of liberty? 
requires virtue. Statism divides people into controlled groups, controllable groups. Liberty leaves people it leaves people free to associate. To to be or not to be, to be free to or not to be. Who makes the rule? Who decides who terminates the engagement? Statism it, it encourages envy. Liberty it encourages wise decision making. Statism it roy it uh, reward <laughs> right right road. Right. Try that one. It rewards loyalty to who the state. Liberty rewards loyalty to hard work. What does the state do? It destroys success. And liberty rewards success. It rewards itself. It's the uh, culmination. It's the collection. The result. The process to put in and extract. Whether you be putting paint to paper and make a picture or you're digging up the uh, colors of the that the uh, ores and all the other flavors that make up such uh, all the colors of the rainbow splatter on on well all comes from somewhere and if you don't produce it it has to be taken that's what the state does it's taker it's the other side of the oh what about well there's contract for that yeah so yes if a person let's say uh when an insurance for their automobile well the state says you have to well, are they protecting other people in case somebody's not responsible? There's a lot to go into all of that, right? But the difference is is force and free will. Well, the state, uh, it seeks to control others. Where liberty leaves you to seek, it seeks to keep others from controlling you. So it's that. Limits uh, on your uh, options come from the state. Where, uh, where liberty offers a limit, limitless uh, options, all that you can uh, obtain along the way, whether by yourself or together with others. Statism results in suffering. There's freedom in liberty. Thanks, Austin. Austin Thomas. <clears throat> In here, uh, below that, you're going to see uh, a little thing here. It says the Second Amendment. And it has a guy holding a gun with sunglasses and a cool hat that might be American flaggers. I don't know. It's a real three percenters in Idaho. I celebrate with uh, Eric Parker. You know, I'm going to click this just so you can hear it. You'll like it, I, I tell you. You will. See what the Second Amendment sounds like. Y'all know Eric Parker? Yeah, he uh, was locked up for a couple of years there and for being a pair to Bundy's and helping them. This is them. Eric, I hit him. Boom. <laughs> we better stop that. YouTube Live will get all excited and things. The Real 3 Percenters. Idaho celebrate with Eric Parker. Come on over to the radio log and find all this. We've got some past due perspectives. The meaning of due process. I'll come back up to that if I got time because we're coming to the end. But I'll at least give you an introduction and let you find the rest. But from a few quotations, from a few qu quotations we shouldn't forget, <coughs> I've got a couple here. One from Ammon Bundy and one from Brian Hyde. I know both these men. Uh, I mean, not uh, intimately, but. Uh, Enough time around them to know the, what type of, <coughs> what kind of person they are. Good men. <coughs> I'll testify. Remember, I'm a witness, also a judge, and I advocate for both these men. One of the truest tests of whether we deserve to be free can be found in our willingness to insist that others be afforded the protections from state-sponsored mischief. This means standing for the rights of others others including those with whom we disagree <clears throat> sure enough Brian the only control we have is self-control Ammon Bundy says well Ammon Bundy's back in the news uh, tried to buy a gun and uh, initially he was de denied uh, we have back the FBI 
lifted the uh, where he couldn't get it, and I guess he could, and I wanted him to sign all these paperwork and stuff. And in here, you'll you'll find a link here from uh, Channel 7 KTVB, Boise, Idaho. Above that will be the link uh, from Brian Hyde and uh, uh, speaking about this matter. We're going to come back up to it even if I go over some. I don't think we will because I think I'm coming here just enough of uh, what matters. Yeah, also, uh, Adam and Bundy, that is, uh, I say here that I uh, copied there from uh, Channel 7, Boise, Idaho. He protests federal gun, uh, federal background check for gun purchases. He says that I do not agree <coughs> with any of the processes. <coughs> okay. What matters of Ponder Gander? Radio writing series with me, Vince Easley. Radio writing. It is to think and reason. Raising expectations through thought-provoking episodes. Sounds great. Less filling. Thunder gander. Hey, tell YouTube to get bit and get the bit shoot. And then once you get over there, go ahead and click and then come on back over here to the R log at Real Liberty Media, and that way you can find all this clickable uh, in uh, clickable color that it be. Uh, bit shoot Real Liberty Media and uh, YouTube Real Liberty Media. They can find the channels. <coughs> channels here uh, clickable clickable all clickable uh, freedoms network real liberty media uh, real liberty media.com and published by me vincent easley the second what matters uh ponder again the radio writing series the usa versus bundy et al uh the bundy ranch standoff and trial report by myself standing in the gap connecting voices considering perspective perspectives in broadcast and what matters Worldwide, find me at uh, Real Liberty Media slash Author slash Vine on uh, the Twitter Vinny R L M Radio, and as a Ponder Gander, there's Barman dash uh, underscore that is uh, R L M and R L M underscore Radio at behind the woodshed. Uh, all the Twitter links there. Go over if you're a Twitter. Uh, I seem to have repeated myself here <laughs> a few times through here at the end. Um, add and subtract, but that's okay. Uh, right here, the Real Liberty Media website. You'll find uh, on the YouTube, you'll play the, find the Bunny Ranch playlist. And I'd like to say that under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Yeah, right on down there is a picture that InfoWars got on. And the Cowboys all lined up down there in the Toqualla Wash out there near the Virgin River. And you'll see under the bridge that full of white t-shirt and a white sign. It said media on it. That was me, 2014. I was, uh, uh, there's a member of uh, Minor Media. I encamped at what has been called the Battle of Bunkerville. I reported via internet radio from the Bundy Ranch standoff in the spring of 2014 along the Virgin River in southern Nevada. I returned to Las Vegas for the federal trial of USA versus Bundy et al. as a reporter and as a witness. Number 303 for the defense. Go to that YouTube channel in the playlist. You'll find history and current events, live stream, video, radio broadcast of the standoff led by the Bureau of Land Management against the peaceful pushback protest standing in the gap at the Bundy Ranch. And I am continuing to stand a witness. We hardly even talked about the bunnies today, uh, Moose Girl, but I'm going back up here <coughs> to uh, Brian Hyde. We've got to have just a little list right here, and we'll run it out part way and let you come back to see the rest for yourself. And the meaning of due process. <coughs> As it opens, this is uh, uh, SoUtahNow.com. So for South, this is uh, perspectives. Hey, we talked about perspective. Another part of it tied together. Ammon Bundy and the meaning of due process. This is an opinion piece from Brian Hyde, September the eighth, twenty nineteen. South or, or S O Utah now. Uh, S O Utah now dot com. Perspectives. Ammon Bundy and the meaning of due process. As a part of my week, uh, as part of my work, says Brian, I produce Ammon Bundy's Liberty Effect podcast each Thursday afternoon. This means I have a chance to visit with him on a regular basis. I mention this is the in, in the interest of full disclosure of the friendship that I enjoy with him. <coughs> I should have had a drink before I start. Hold on.
<coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Brian continues, I've watched with great interest as he and his family <coughs> have worked to put their lives back together after their long ordeal with the rogue federal agents and the prosecutors. Very crooked, very, very crooked what they all did there. <coughs> we'll be coming back to all this too in uh, further broadcast. Uh, regardless of whether one agrees with the stance or not, it's very telling that the Bundys that the that they are free at all. You know, matter of fact, in the uh, <coughs> when Ryan Bundy was released, I was in there talking to uh, Ken Ritter, uh, AP, very uh, prolific writer, uh, propagandizer. I kind of thought, oh, well, he's old time, and as I watch more and more, I seem really I, I came to have an understanding, an inside look, or at least. A look around or a look at face to face of uh, mainstream media. <coughs> Met a lot of them. I, I trapped them in the el elevator <laughs> in the <coughs> excuse me in the federal courthouse and, and gave them a little talk. Dude, wasn't none of them look at me except for uh, Maxine Bernstein. Cause I said you get top honor, Maxine. And then now some of the poots, as they call us, Bundy supporters, as uh, <laughs> from the opposition, uh, they'll say, "Oh, she's she's as bad," but. I, I watched her change in her writing. Um, she became less and less uh, um, interjecting her own uh, ideas and views. She she brought the court record to bear and all the all all the main points. And I'm over there sitting, and when I was in the courtroom, trying to write everything being said there, uh, turning some of it into chicken scratch. But I, I'm very impressed with uh, that lady and a. Uh, I think she did a fine job of, of bringing the facts out there, and, and there's other people. The Review Journal, <laughs> they they made lawsuit to to make them uh, uh, unseal these documents. Very crooked how the court systems work. Boy, uh, you know, I, I was saying, I was talking to Ken Ritter in the bathroom, in the man's room. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, no, you. <laughs> in walks uh, Ryan Bundy, and I'm saying, I can't believe she let him out. I really never expected it. I thought I was going there to, to witness these men being locked up the rest of their life. It's amazing. One thing after another fell together. And eventually, it collapsed on the, on the courts. They had no choice but to dismiss with prejudice. When the, Let me continue here. When the Bureau of Land Management sent a military uh, militarized task force to threaten them and take their cattle, the Bundys miraculously survived. Uh, yeah, they could have very much been, in, uh, and probably would have been, as uh, me and many others suspected, have been then uh, like uh, Waco. <coughs> they had been uh, shot and killed and burnt down, their whole house around their ears. <coughs> but fortunately, a lot of Americans found out in time <coughs> and was able to get there and stand in the gap. That's what it was, a peaceful pushback. You know, we're saying you're not going to govern at gunpoint. You're not going to do and make others do because you say so. Back to the top of this blog. See where all that works in together. Well, during this time, they treated uh, they were treated exactly as if they had been convicted of the crimes for which they were accused. The judge at the trials in Oregon and Nevada reminded the courtroom daily that as defendants, they were presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. It sure didn't look that way. Ah, that's a fact. They nearly hogtied them and gagged them. They had uh, Eric Parker, they wouldn't let him testify. Shut down, shut down, shut down. And then, then we come to the third trial, which was the uh, what they call the main uh, agitators with uh, Cliven and and Ryan and Elman and Ryan Payne. They were the four there. They had tried uh, other men ahead of them. Uh, Eric Parker, he'll be in prison unless something miraculous happens to him and die there. Um, Todd Engel, I think he's looking at another eight years. Jerry Dilemmas, another about as many years, six, five. A while for that's that's a good while for an old man, sixty something years old. Now the U.S. Mar Marshals and I've got a video I went in and showed them in this transportation in the helicopter escort. So they transported them to and fro from the courthouse and 
and drove at breakneck speed, speed uh, uh, with the lights flashing, sirens are screaming, and choppers circled overhead. Yeah, I went down to uh, <coughs> to video them as they were exiting out of the uh, underground park in there, gated in. They spent their whole time running them back and forth, back and forth. For a while, they were at prump at Pahrump. So I mean, they'd get there and all the rigmarole, the, the invasive uh, stripping, searching. The, they call it diesel therapy. Wear them down, wear them down. How those men walked out of that jail, out of that federal, uh, the occupiers that had captured them. I, it's miraculous. It is miraculous. And uh, Brian goes on to say, despite all the judicial uh, melodrama, the juries that overheard their cases weren't buying the prosecution. There were uh, there were jurors that came back after they were dismissed in you know, December twentieth, uh, twenty uh, uh, seventeen. They came back uh, January eighth, uh, and uh, that's when it was official that uh, Navarro. She in December twentieth, she. Uh, declared a mistrial and then in January 2018 it was uh, dismissed with prejudice and you know the uh, prosecution came along uh, and filed uh, an appeal against that and they uh, with Brady violations Giglio violations uh, horrid uh, threats kill list uh, on and on lying uh, and the prosecutor was all in it with him. I'm going to be coming back to all this too later, more in a, another broadcast. So I'm officially back from summer. I, I took the summer off, which uh, means that uh, I just uh, did some radio when I wanted to. Me and Flash was doing some radio, like my friend Flash. Um, and I did a few pounder ganders here. Uh, but that's official back to Fridays at noon central here at Real Liberty Media. Well, they were facing the most powerful government in the history of the planet. And boy, ain't that a fact. With uh, virtually, well, I'd say not say virtually, they've got unlimited manpower and resources at its disposal. I guess it couldn't be unlimited. There's got to be a limit somewhere. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know where it's at. It's a long ways from here, out of my purview. The Bundys appeared doomed. They did. Yet somehow they were delivered from captivity and walked back into the sunlight as free men with clean records. Y'all can come back here and read the rest about this and this uh, gun business and there's uh, uh, a big link here at the R-Log. But it wasn't a miracle. I I can't believe it did it. I can't believe they came out. I can, I can't. Uh, I probably I'll go find a, put the uh, video of the, well I don't know if I will. It's a video of the uh, helicopter and the uh, I talked about the highway patrol woman uh, that was, uh, sh I walked out in front of her car with my magic piece of paper. It stops bullets. Yes, it does. Uh, or a laminated piece of paper. It's magic. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Real Liberty Media. Media. Press. It's, it could be, uh, you could write, you could tear, and write out a, a phone book and write notes and magic marker and pass them out and say looky here looky here once you read it that's still press no matter how small there it is thanks flash nailed it down and add again from Brian Hyde um, so Utah now dot com both these men I know I shot the video for Brian uh, interviewed him uh, Ammon Matter of fact, I had the breaking uh, interview, and there were some people from France and somewhere else in video at the same time, where uh, I asked uh, Amy and some Bundy, and that's in the uh, YouTube playlist, the Bundy Ranch playlist. Um, you'll find that at the bottom of the radio log. Look through there. There's uh, some 60-odd videos, and uh, most of those, almost every single one of them are mine originally. Uh, uh, I did uh, mirror uh, a couple, but uh, that's for... Uh, Austerity. Well, this video—I mean, this—this uh, this goes on more and more. Brian does a, a fantastic job. He's a great writer and a good man. It really is. Some people have—you uh, you can see it in. Uh, I wanted to say about that sunlight. Yes, Carol Bundy. She says the beautiful thing about the uh, truth is it's so easy to tell. 
in that sunlight is a disinfectant and because so many of us came there partly to partly but a great deal goes to, uh, of the uh, that uh, of who done what uh, Ryan Ryan Bundy he uh, he got run over as a kid and his uh, side one side of his face is is all like a uh, big scar and paralyzed and um, only one side of his mouth works. He asked the jury. He said, uh, "Would my appearance cause you any, you know, to look at me any other way?" No, nope, they said. Pretty amazing man. He uh, he brought it. There wasn't the lawyers. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the lawyers didn't do it. I jacked him up too a little bit outside the courtroom, and I caught uh, Dan Hill over in the state courthouse. Grimner highlighted. Uh, uh, comment. Let me go say. Um, I got a new comment. Oh, hey, thank you. Comment 18. I'll have to come back to that just a minute after I'm done. Because I'm about done. I wrapped it up. <clears throat> where, where, where? Let me see here. Oh, wait. I got a message from Julieta. It's Pablo. There he is. Thank you. That was the uh, that was the artist from Alejandro. Uh, the extra link I've included. Uh, Pablo Neruda is his name and, and here's a link from the Poetry Foundation thank you so I'll be able to put that into the uh, radio log uh, for, for uh, description he was born in 1904 he died in 1973 Pablo Neruda is one of the most influential and widely read 20th century poets of, of the Americas no writer of world renown is perhaps so little known to North America as Chilean poet Pablo Neruda. Observed the New York Times book review critic Selden Rodman. Uh, numerous critics have praised Neruda as the greatest poet writing in the Spanish language during his lifetime. John Leonard in the New York Times declared that Neruda was, I think, one of the uh, great ones, a Whitman of the South. Among contemporary readers in the United States, he is largely remembered for his odes and love poems. Um, like I said, the, the link is included for the Alejandro. I think it's uh, the, the 20th song, and, and there's also links back to uh, this man, uh, to, their, to a poem there, but explore more. Yes, join the journey by all means, and I'm going to take and put this in and add it in to the end. The uh, tunication process. Let me go back. Somebody's saying howdy. A new comment. A flash says Uncle Vinny is deep in the memory hole right now, Grimner. Trust. Says sir. And uh, thank you. She says I'm doing great. I appreciate you. For a redneck sis last. That's husband and wife. A little way over beyond the sea. Somewhere waiting for me. Da da da. Okay. Hey, we've lost some folks and we've gained some here at Real Liberty Media. Mary, <clears throat> in her rocket chair, has been grounded. She's uh, parked the the machine, the old blast off rocket, in the garage and put a tarp over it and stepped away from the mic here at Real Liberty Media. Perhaps we'll find her back here again another day. Flash is left. But I'm trying to drag them back in. If I could reach over and just grab a hold of them, I might tug them. Anyway, so Flash is left off doing radio from the dork table on Saturdays. From In a Perfect World, which he and I started together with you on Tuesdays. So contrasting the occupation as to a silenced as well as the Thursday edition. A 20% off. What we do have, we got coming up tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We've got the Freakers Ball, y'all. Be free. That's a freaker. is spelled F-R-E-E. -E. Curse. Freakers ball. Well, celebrate, celebrate being free. Come back Sunday. Noon. Grimner's playing blues right here. We've got a game of trivia going on. If you've got fast fingers in a fast mind. And it's going to help a whole lot if you got internet speed. Because we got some pretty sharp feathers and uh, gals over here. Sure enough. Uh, Sunday, 3 p.m. That's noon o'clock on the left coast. Hal Anthony comes from behind the woodshed. 
most underappreciated man I think I've known. Uh, I know why, because people think they already know, and they can't hear. And I hear it repeated in what people say they think he's saying, and they've missed it by a mile. You better come over here and listen for yourself. Hal Anthony, Behind the Woodshed, Real Liberty Media, Sundays at 3 p.m. on the East Coast. Now, it's 2. That'd be 7 p.m. Greenwich Minutes time. I keep saying minutes on purpose. Uh, Grimner, we're going we're gonna to change it to Grimner time. Well, that's uh, <coughs> Central, I mean Mountain. <coughs> All right, where was I at? Oh, yeah, behind the woodshed. I've come out from behind the woodshed in uh, time to start getting back and uh, getting more involved in the post-production behind the woodshed for me. Mondays, we've got grim leftovers. Uh, you know what? I've got to do this proper here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go over here. I want to read this. What, uh, this is a one. That, um, come here. It's on down because I put a couple of twits. Here it is. Here it is. I like it. Good news, bad news. Some people like their feed to taste good, while others prefer it served in good taste. Irregardless. And again, they say not to use irregardless. Grimner gone on to it, but hey, I checked it before I used it. Some people do it, and, but it's frowned on. Irregardless, I did use it. No matter how you slice it, the leftovers will be grim. Now come on over and have a pond or gander and get a belly full. That'd be coming up on Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's right. Grim Leftovers with Grim Near on reallibertymedia.com. And then back around to the day before it is today, which will be in the future or six days from now, we've got the Power Hour with Poops and Princeter. <laughs> Princeter? <laughs> Poopster and Prince. That's right. Not the uh, artist formerly known as, but the one like Prince, like a puppy dog track. That's right. So they, uh, they last night they had their third episode here on Real Liberty Media. Welcome, welcome, fellas. And uh, we've got Poopster going to get them a Twitter going, and we've got Prince. He's got his one, and they've got YouTube. Just, just come on over and check out the schedule and look at all the lineup and all that. But uh, Remember where you at and how you got back. There's no going back. There's no going back. But avoid the pitfalls in, as you move forward, and stay out of the path of the beast that wants to consume you. You can avoid the uh, path of the state in many ways, where you're not putting, where you're not going to be locked up. But sometimes there's no nowhere to go. There's no budge. There's no move. There's no go. Stand in the gap. This is me, Vincent Easley. Stand in the gap here at reallibertymedia.com. Thanks for listening, folks. you got about two minutes till it's uh, 4.20 somewhere. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to give this uh, recorder a stop and say, hey, thanks for listening, folks, and we'll see you around next time. Come on over to Real Liberty Media. Join in the chat. Uh, come in here and, and see where it's at. Maybe get a little chit-chat going for yourself and uh, uh, poke some eyes, poke some bears. You know what I said? I thought it was funny. Let's see if it makes any sense to you, and then I'll quit. Ah, where is it at? Here it is. Can I get it? Can I get it? Give a, give a bear a fish, and he'll eat that. Let me try again. Give a bear a fish, and he'll eat that day. Teach a bear to fish, and he He'd probably eat you and not need fish for a few days. <laughs> now, if that bear could talk, he'd say, Sit down right there, old boy, and let me show you how it's done. Dumbass. <laughs> I loved it. It was funny. It came to me. I, and I just, I don't know how well it sounds, but I liked it. Maybe you might. Tell me if you do or don't. Okay, I'm trying to close this window and get back over here. That's it. See y'all. Bye. Thanks.